Questions 1 through 10 on the 2013 Grade 8 AMC 8. Danica wants to arrange her model cars in rows with exactly six cars in each row. She now has 23 model cars. What is the smallest number of additional cars she must buy in order to be able to arrange her cars in this way? So she has 23, and the 23 can be arranged 6, 6, 6, but then you'll have 5. So if she wants all of the cars to be exactly 6 in each row, she needs one more car. That would make that equal 6. So she needs one more in order to get four rows of 6. So the answer for number 1 is A. A sign at the fish market says 50% off today only half pound packages for just $3 per package. What is the regular price for a full pound of fish in dollars? Well, half a pound, the regular price most likely was $6 because the 50% off sale makes it $3. So here's the discount price and here's the full price. Well, if half a pound is six and three, then one full pound would obviously be double those numbers. So the full would cost 12 and the discount would cost six. And what they're asking for is what is this? The full price of a full pound or regular price of a full pound. So that is 12, and therefore number 2 is D. What is the value of 4 times negative 1 plus 2, negative 3, plus 4, negative 5, plus 6, negative 7, all the way up to positive 100? Let's talk about what's in the brackets first. Negative 1 plus 2, negative 3, plus 4, negative 5, plus 6, negative 7, plus 8, and so on, right? Dot, 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 all the way until most likely you're getting to minus 999 plus 1,000. And each of these, if you notice, equal just 1. That's 1, that's 1, that's 1, that's 1, and then the very last one is 1. So a whole bunch of 1s. How many 1s are there? Well, each pair makes a 1. There's 1,000 numbers, so there's 500 pairs. So this really is going to be 500 1s, and that will obviously add up to 500. And then don't forget, you have to multiply by 4. So 4 times 500 is 2,000. So the answer to number 3 is E. Eight friends ate at a restaurant and agreed to share the bill equally because Judy forgot her money. Each of her seven friends paid an extra $2.50 to cover her portion of the total bill. What was the total bill? So there's eight friends, and they share equally. So each pays X over 8. And one friend, Judy, she forgot her uh, money, so she unfortunately can't contribute. So that means the remaining seven friends have to add an additional $2.50 to the amount that they pay. So now we are asked to look at this whole sum because that equals x. So how many of these x over 8s do we have? We have 7 of them. So 7 times x over 8. And then these 2.5s, we have seven of those guys. And that whole thing is equal to the amount of the bill, which is x. x was the amount of the original bill. So this is the algebra we have to solve. This is 7x over 8. And this is 17.5 is equal to x. Bring the x's over, and we get 17.5 is equal to x over 8. And therefore, multiply through by 8, and you get... 35 times 4, so 140. So the original bill was $140. Number 4, therefore, is C. Hammy is in the 6th grade and weighs 106 pounds. His quadruplet sisters are tiny babies and weigh 5, 5, 6, and 8 pounds. Which is greater, the average weight of these five children or the median weight and by how many pounds? Okay, let's first figure out the average, and then we'll figure out the median. The average will be 106 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 8, and there's 5 kids, so we divide by 5. If you do that math, you get 26, so this is the average. Now let's figure out the median. The median is figured out by arranging the numbers 
from smallest to largest and then looking at the middle number. So the middle number obviously is the 6. So that represents my median. So what's larger, the average or the median? Well obviously the average is larger. By how much? Well the average is 26, the median is 6, so by a factor or, or by an amount of 20. Average is larger than the median by 20. And that is represented by choice E for number 5. The number in each box below is the product of the numbers in the two boxes that touch it in the row above. For example, 30 is equal to 6 times 5. What is the missing number in the top row? Well, I'll call this x and I'll call this y. So based on the definition of the question, 30 times x is equal to 600. So that means if you divide 600 by 30, you get x. And that means x is equal to 20. So this is 20 in here. So again, now we look at these guys. 5 times y is going to be equal to 20. So that means y would be 20 divided by 5, which is 4. And that is the missing number in the top row. So number 6, the answer is 4, which is choice C. Trey and his mom stopped at a railroad crossing to let a train pass. As the train began to pass, Trey counted six cars in the first 10 seconds. It took the train two minutes and 45 seconds to clear the crossing at a constant speed. Which of the following was the most likely number of cars in the train? So six cars pass in 10 seconds. So we want to know how many cars pass in the full amount of time, which is two minutes and 45 seconds. Two minutes and 45 seconds converted to seconds would be 120 plus 45, so that's 165 seconds. And then at this point, we just have to do some basic algebra. Cross multiply, we get 10x is equal to 6 times 165, which is 990, and therefore x is 99. So 99 cars will pass in 2 minutes and 45 seconds. And most likely number of cars, therefore, is the closest to 99, which is 100. So number 7, the answer is C. A fair coin is tossed three times. What is the probability of at least two consecutive heads? Well, when you toss a coin three times, these are the possible outcomes. You can have all heads. You can have heads, heads, tails. Heads, tails, heads. Tails, head, head. Like that. Or you can have, let's see, H T, T, you can have T, H, T, or you can have T, T, H, and then finally all three tails. Now what they want is at least two consecutive heads, okay? Well, let's circle the ones that meet that criteria, at least two consecutive heads. This one meets the criteria, it's three consecutive heads. This is two consecutive heads. This is not anything consecutive. That's two consecutive heads. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not. So of the eight possible outcomes, three satisfy the condition of the question. So three out of eight is the probability, and therefore number eight, the answer is C. The Incredible Hulk can double the distance. He jumps with each succeeding jump. In his first jump as one meter, Second jump is 2 meters, third jump is 4 meters, and so on. Then on which jump will he first be able to jump more than 1 kilometer? When I was a boy, I used to watch a TV show on uh, uh, that was called The Incredible Hulk. And the actor who played The Incredible Hulk was Lou Ferrigno. And many years later, they actually made a movie uh, about The Incredible Hulk, but unfortunately, they didn't use Lou Ferrigno to be in the film, which I thought was a bit unfortunate since he is technically the original Incredible Hulk. Anyhow, moving forward with this question, on the first jump it's one meter, on the second jump it's two meters, third jump four, and then we just have to sort of keep counting like this. It'll be eight, then it doubles to 16, then 32, and then 64, 
128, ninth jump is 256, tenth jump is 512, and then finally the eleventh jump is 1024 meters, and 1024 meters is the first one that's over a kilometer, and that happens on the eleventh jump. So number nine, the answer is C. What is the ratio of the least common multiple of 180 and 594 to the greatest common factor of 180 and 594? We have two numbers, and first let's figure out the LCM, least common multiple. Okay, well, to do that, we have to break this into prime factors. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. That's the prime factorization of 180. And for 594, it's 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 11. To get the LCM, what you have to do is look at each number and look at the maximum number of times it appears. So if you start with 2, the maximum it appears is 2 times 2. It ap appears as 2 times 2. So that will be part of the LCM, 2 times 2. So we've taken care of the 2s. Now for 3, same thing. What is the maximum amount of time it appears? It appears 3 times. So that's got to be put in the LCM. 3, 3, 3. Now 5, it only appears once and 11 only appears once. So this is the LCM. The GCF, greatest common factor, is a little bit different. That, you have to see what's the maximum that's common to both. So going back to the original numbers, if you look at 2, the most that appears is once. It's appearing once here and appears twice here. So we can only put the 2 once because it's got to appear in both right? If I say, well, what if I put 2 twice? It doesn't appear twice over here, so that can't be done. It can only appear once in the GCF. How about the 3? appears 3 times here, uh, sorry, it appears twice here and 3 times here, so the one that appears twice is what we have to include because it's got to be common to both. You can't put 3 because it doesn't appear 3 times over here. And then the 5 is not common to either. It appears there, but it doesn't appear there. And the 11 is not common to either. So 5 and 11 are not part of the GCF. So the GCF is really just 2 times 3 times 3. Now they want you to find the ratio between the LCM and the GCF. Okay, well that looks like 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 11 all over 2 times 3 times 3. And it looks like these guys will cancel with that guy. So the only thing that's left is 2 times 3 times 5 times 11. And if you do that math, you will get 330. So that's the ratio. So number 10, the answer is C.